I want to demonstrate right now how some web designers are landing clients for $10,000 while other people are struggling with clients that haggle over even $1,000. Like just this morning, my friend Evan, who's in double stack with me, sent me a message that said, hey Lee, I just landed a $10,000 client today, like this morning. So Evan, if you're watching, high five, man, that's awesome. So what's the secret sauce? What are, what are Evan and I doing that enable us to land $10,000 clients while everybody else is struggling with these low budget projects? Well, it comes down to one thing, which is we've graduated from, from operating in like order taker mode and we've moved into problem solver mode. And I wanna demonstrate what that looks like because it's all of the difference. It's not like it was before the pandemic where you could just walk up to a local business owner and sell them a $5,000 website and that would be fine. Like that type of interaction is rare, but it's not that these local business owners aren't buying anything. Like I've got some stats I wanna share with you. I'm gonna put the links down below for where I'm getting these stats from. But it says 43% of small businesses plan to invest on improving their website's performance this year. So that means if you reach out to a local business, there's probably a 50-50 chance that they're probably gonna, or a 43% chance that they're gonna spend some money on something. And so why not spend it with you, right? Well, the problem becomes in, well, what do they, what do they buy and what do they feel like it's worth? Because if they come to you, like say you get a lead from a local business owner and they're like, hey Lee, I need you to build me this website. What are they gonna say? You know, if you say, okay, well, great. Send me the content, you know, give me the images, whatever. Like send me the stuff that I need to build the site. They're gonna be thinking, I want you to build a website so that you can, that you can highlight my services and my, and my products. Of course, right? Obviously that's what they're gonna say. In fact, the stats show that 24% of people feel like that's why they wanna have a website. That's the number one reason people wanna have a website is to highlight their products and services, which is obvious, but the problem is, it stops there. Like, what about the traffic? What about getting leads? What about nurturing the leads into clients? What about dealing with client retention and customer loyalty? Like, what about solving those problems rather than just taking orders and building web pages and, and stuff without really thinking through why is this going to work or even is this going to work? So that's a, that's a huge thing. So here's some more stats that kind of underscore this. Small businesses with websites get 126% more leads than those without a website. So if you ever had a client say, well, I don't really, we don't really need a website. We get most of our clients or our traffic or whatever through, through Facebook. So we just use our Facebook page. Well, if someone says that to you, there's a huge opportunity, 126%. That's more than doubling, right? 100% is doubling. So 126% more leads if they set up a website as opposed to what they're just doing now through social media or whatever. So that's a huge, so the opportunity is there but the problem is most websites aren't getting traffic. It says 21% of local business websites or local business owners say that the major problem with their website is it doesn't get any traffic. That's like one in five. That's like the major problem, right? And so if they're not getting any traffic, how are they gonna get any results from it? But here's, it's even worse than this. So like suppose they do get traffic. The next stat is 82% of local business websites lack a call to action. <laughs> And in my experience, it's more like 99%. It's very rare to go to, to a local business website and have a clear call to action. So even if they are getting a little bit of traffic, it's just slipping through their fingers. Not, there's no, like if you're looking at the website, you don't know what to do next. There's no call to action. That's crazy, right? So, so why, not, why not solve those problems, right? Like why not help the business owner think through, here's how to use the website effectively, not just putting products and services on it. It's a huge thing. Websites with a clear call to action have a 121% higher conversion rate. That's huge, right? It was also kind of obvious, right? If you don't have a call to action, what are you supposed to do? Put one on there, 121% conversion rate boost, right? These are huge results. The, the, the reason I'm, I'm so excited about this is because all of these numbers, 126% more leads, 121% higher conversion rate. That's, it's just, it's unbelievable. It says 86% of customers search Google Maps before visiting a business, 86%, that's a large number. And so that means that a lot of that traffic is coming through, through mobile devices. You know, they're pulling out their phones, searching Google Maps, finding something, clicking through, looking at the website. I do this all the time, especially for like restaurants and other stuff like that. But um, what if the website, maybe it's, maybe it's mobile friendly, like maybe the theme is responsive, but they usually have like these massive images, load time takes forever. It's just not that great of an experience. And, it, and that's, that's a huge amount of traffic that's just kind of being missed from all of that that's negatively impacting conversion rates. So what do you do? So why not solve some of those issues? So let me give you some examples of ways that we can solve these issues and how to think through the larger problem solving mode so that you can start like developing like a different, like a leadership mindset. Like instead of being like the order taker where you're just trying to like say, hey, you tell me what, what you want me to do and then I'm gonna do my best job making you happy doing it. Why not say, in addition to you telling me what you want so I can put the right stuff on the site, here are some other things that we can think about to actually get better results 
And that's a huge thing. And then that's that's really the secret to landing $10,000 clients instead of struggling with these low budget projects. So let me give you a variety of examples of what I mean by solving these problems. The first one is throwing hyper local content onto your client's website. So if they're just thinking about products and services, you can really boost the results by making it hyper local in context. So like talk about an individual neighborhood rather than even just a city or a state. And that makes it feel, and I've got some examples about some hyper-local landing pages and stuff that we'll get, to, get into in a, in a minute, but just just kind of like log the concept of hyper-local kind of in your back pocket as, as something to be sort of, sort of a, a, like a North Star with regard to what kind of content should we put on the site. Oh, here's a technical tip too. Um, local business schema markup. It's just like a little code snippet. And, and um, in fact, I'm going to put down below in the description, I'm going to put a couple links. There's a, there's a whole YouTube series that I've got. It's like three videos on how to land your first $5,000 recurring revenue web design clients. And that first lesson, the, the first video is um, like the setup part of it, which goes into how to actually do the local schema markup stuff. But you can go to ChatGPT and like make the local schema. There's also online utilities to help you. So you don't have to write it by hand or anything. But it's just like the business name, the phone number, the location, the hours, you know, just some of the, the core content that describes your business. You put that in the schema markup. And then when Google looks at that, they can see the details of your business. It helps you show up better for local searches. So that's kind of a technical thing. Oh, and here's another thing too. I'm thinking about um, like putting everything we're talking about right now kind of into an example proposal. And then maybe like delivering the proposal, like you're the client and I'm the web designer. So you could see, see what it looks like and hear what it sounds like to do that. Let me know if you feel like that would be valuable. That'd be, be kind of hard to put that together, but I would do it if you feel like it would be helpful. So um, drop a comment or, or hit subscribe so you don't miss that when that comes up. But let's go back to talking about what to say on the website. So problem specific landing pages is another really cool content category for stuff to say. So, so it'd be problem specific. So it's not really like a blog post necessarily, but it would be like you would ask your client, so say you're working with a client that does pest control. You would say something like, Williamsburg bed bug extermination services. So that's so it's not just pest control. It's like really specific. It's like if you have bed bugs in Williamsburg, then this is for you, right? Other examples could be like ant control or rodent removal. And so you just like look through the different types of problems or individual specific services that your client provides and make individual landing pages for each one of those, which is a lot better than saying we do pest control in general or even just having one big page that lists all of the stuff. It's a lot easier to SEO and to get traffic if each page is kind of dedicated to one particular set of keywords like rodent removal or whatever. So that would be an example of, of landing pages for problem specific things. And then on those pages, you would say stuff like location specific stats, like how many houses in the Fox Ed subdivision or how many houses in Williamsburg are likely to have ants in the kitchen, Just, you know, something like that. Um, signs to look for, customer reviews from that specific area. Um, location specific calls to action. So we talked about location, uh, like lead magnets and stuff before, but here's an example of a location specific call to action. Suppose you were living in the Foxhead subdivision over in, uh, down the road here in Williamsburg, and you went to somebody's pest control website that said that, hey, you know, stick your email address in here. We're gonna be in Foxhead this certain time you know, during, these, you know, during these days of the week or whatever and you know, join the group, you'll get a group rate discount. And so then you're thinking, oh wow, that's for me, I'm in Foxhead, I'm getting a group rate discount, my neighbors are using the same service, so I guess I'll trust them because everybody else is using them. Like imagine landing on a page like that compared to a page that, or, 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 or like a pest control business that didn't have anything at all like that. Like I, mean, I, would, be, I would sign up for the local one, right? Like the one that's, oh, I live in that neighborhood, my neighbors are using it, I'm gonna get a discount because I'm part of the group. My friend Nick tipped me off into this idea yeah, he runs a landscaping business. And he said, hey, Lee, I get paid to drive lawnmowers, not trucks. <laughs> and so like, what he means by that is he wants a tightly packed route. Like when he goes to, to do lawn care for people, he wants to show up in a neighborhood, mow all the lawns, and then go home. Like he doesn't want to do like one lawn here, drive a million miles, do another lawn over there, and spend all day driving his truck. He wants to spend his time actually mowing the lawns. And that's the benefit to the local business of having these location-specific landing pages because you are getting these tightly packed routes, but you're also building trust and everything else by getting people in a particular subdivision to say, oh wow, they, they, know, they know me, they care about me, I'm getting a discount, that sort of a thing. So there's another group of, of, of landing pages that are really interesting to put together for your clients. There are like, um, like referral network landing pages. Let me give you a couple of examples of what I mean. Suppose you're working with the pest control business 
and you and you put up a, a landing page about how it's great to work with this pest control business if you're a real estate agent. And so you would say, like, maybe you have special rates or like special faster response times or certain packages or whatever for why it's great to work with me as a pest control business if you're a real estate agent, right? So maybe the real estate agent goes to somebody's house, they're looking at the house, everything looks great, but oh, you know, you got ants in the kitchen. And then the real estate agent can say, hey, don't worry about it. I've got a guy that I work with for all of this stuff. And so now your pest control business is getting referrals from the real estate agent because you've got this really nice way of working together. And imagine if you're the real estate agent and you saw a landing page about how this pest control business has special packages and a special way of working with real estate agents compared to if you didn't say that. Like, obviously, I'd want to work with a person that specializes in working with people like me if I'm the real estate agent. Here's some more examples of um, like referral network landing pages that you can put together for pest control. So you can see examples of what I mean. Property management would be a good one. Home renovation, landscaping and lawn care, local restaurants and food services, self storage facilities. I mean, you don't want bugs in that, right? Uh, moving companies, vacation rentals, home cleaning services. And like the home cleaning service, you can even cross promote. Like if you were doing pest control, and you went to somebody's home and, and it looked like they could really use some home cleaning service. You could say, hey, are you interested in this carpet cleaning or any of this other stuff? And you could start passing leads back and forth. So as you're building these, these landing pages, you would just talk about why, if you are a home cleaning service provider, it's a good idea to work with me as a pest control provider so we can pass leads together. You have these dedicated pages for that. HVAC and plumbing services would be another one because they're always crawling up under your house and looking at these little nooks and crannies that you don't normally look at. Maybe they notice some bugs or some termite nests or something like that. And they would say, hey, don't worry about it. I know this guy. And so you've got these special packages. So now you've got, you've got some really cool stuff where you're like getting leads, not just direct to consumer leads like we talked about with the, with the searches and all that stuff, but you're also getting business to business leads and referrals coming in. So do you, see, do you see what I mean by this? So it's not just let me put up a few pages to talk about your products and services. It's let me help you solve the whole process of getting leads, you know, nurturing the leads and, and not just consumer leads, but also business referral leads. Like it's, it's a huge difference between what we're talking about here versus, hey, just let me build you a website. And when we come at it with this holistic mindset, you can charge so much more. And not only can you charge more, but your clients are getting better results from it, which is why they can pay more. And you get this ongoing relationship going, right? So it's, it's not like you have to build all these pages all at once. Like if you're going to do blogging, and you're going to do a blog post a week or whatever, you don't have to write 50 blog posts before you launch the website or even these landing pages that we talked about. You don't have to write all 24 landing pages or whatever before you launch. You can just do a landing page a week or a landing page a month. So you can like spread all of this stuff out over time. So this ongoing relationship with recurring revenue for, for your business, which is helping your clients, like for example, we were talking about the seasonal, like the content calendar, like just write whatever's current, right? You don't have to write the whole year's worth of content now. So that gives you this, this whole like infinitely long work schedule that you can keep working with your clients. That's awesome for me. It's awesome for the businesses. It's, it's awesome for everybody in the mix, which is really cool. But then the question is, well, what do you charge? Like, how would you charge for that stuff? And should you put those prices on your website? So check out this next video over here and I'll talk to you a little bit about how do you decide when is the right time to post your prices or even should you post your prices? So check that out right there. Or if you're interested in seeing my package, my $12,000, kind of recurring revenue package, like what services we include and how we get leads for those clients, check out Modern Client Attractions, that red square right up here. So either way, pick one of these and I'll see you right there.